the whole public face of vaccination has changed. And a large part of that change has been due to the involvement of private individuals. In 2010, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation donated 10 billion, with a B, dollars, US dollars, to make 2010 to 2020 the decade of vaccines. When this announcement was made in 2010, when I was just starting to wake up to the issues with vaccination, I had no concept of what $10 billion could do. But today, with that plan in action, with all that money, the vaccine stakeholders have planted flags everywhere with some startling results. In 2015, the focus in the United States was on making vaccines mandatory for all people, and they were successful in some places, making vaccines a lifestyle event for all people from cradle to grave, and broadening the appeal of live viral vaccines for their immune system benefits, not just for their disease preventing benefits. The World Health Organization strategic plan was printed first in 1993, and then it was updated in 1997. And it morphed into the global immunization vision and strategy, which Bill Gates often makes reference to in his publicity. And you can see it right here in that last paragraph, the global alliance. Today we have a computer software billionaire, the pharmaceutical industry, academia, and the US Department of Homeland Security and the World Health Organization all speaking and working in unison towards the same goals. These alliances should have anyone who listens and watches asking lots of questions. Because the goals are to restrict our health freedom, to censor what we read and can say, and remove our ability to choose what goes into our bodies. One issue that really grabbed me as, as urgent uh, was, were issues related to population, uh, reproductive health. But did you come to reproductive issues as an intellectual? When I was growing up, my parents were always involved in various uh, uh, volunteer things. My dad was uh, head of Planned Parenthood. And it was very controversial uh, to be involved with that is the world's largest private philanthropy causing harm with the same money it uses to do good? That's the question hanging over the charity of Microsoft founder Bill Gates and his wife Melinda today. The Los Angeles Times has revealed the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has made millions of dollars each year from companies blamed for many of the same social and health, pro health problems the foundation seeks to address. Since its inception six years ago, the foundation has committed more than a billion, $11 billion to programs around the world. This includes major grants for vaccine and immunization programs, HIV and AIDS research, and public education here in the United States. But the LA Times investigation reveals the Gates Foundation's humanitarian concerns are not reflected in how it invests its money. In the Niger Delta, where the foundation funds programs to fight polio and measles, the foundation's also invested more than $400 million in companies like Royal Dutch Shell, Exxon Mobil, and Chevron. These oil firms have been responsible for much of the pollution many blame for respiratory problems and other afflictions among the local population. The Gates Foundation also has investments in 69 of the worst polluting companies in the U.S. and Canada, including Dow Chemical. It holds stakes in drug companies whose drugs cost far beyond what most AIDS patients around the world can afford. Other companies in the foundation's portfolio have been accused of transgressions, including forcing thousands of people to lose their homes, supporting child labor, defrauding and neglecting patients in need of medical care. Overall, the LA Times says nearly $9 billion in Gates Foundation money is tied up in companies whose practices run counter to the foundation's charitable goals and social mission. And that number may be understated. Charles Piller, the lead reporter on the Los Angeles Times investigative team that broke this story, joins us now from Los Angeles. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Thanks very much. The specific goal of the Gates Foundation in Nigeria is to eliminate uh, polio and measles. And Polio in particular, uh, as uh, some uh, viewers may know, the epicenter of the remaining polio outbreak in the world is in Nigeria. So it's a crucial area for reducing 
the incidence of polio and as part of a worldwide campaign to eradicate the disease. And uh, the, the problem is that the pollution from these plants, which is so pervasive throughout the countryside, not only causes respiratory problems, but also has the effect, according to health authorities in Nigeria, and I might add that these, uh, their views were validated by scientific studies that we were able to find, that, that these pollutants actually reduce immunity and make the children that are being vaccinated uh, more susceptible to uh, diseases like polio and measles than they otherwise would be. You have to understand that the reason that this flaring is done is that it's cheaper for the oil companies to burn off this gas that occurs with oil deposits that they are drilling. And so as a result, what we found is that the 95% that's invested every year in large measure tends to go to industries, go to companies that in many cases directly engage in activities that tend to subvert the charitable goals of the foundation, not just in the pollution angle, but we found, for example, uh, 1.5 billion approximately in foundation don uh, investments in pharmaceutical companies whose practices tend to price their AIDS drugs out of reach of the very people that the Gates Foundation has decided are its highest priority to help, AIDS victims in the developing world who can only afford a, a very meager price for AIDS drugs but are unable to afford the drugs uh, from companies that the Gates Foundation is making hundreds of millions of dollars in profit from. Charles Piller, Los Angeles Times reporter, two-part series on the Gates Foundation. I want to thank you very much for being with us. We'll certainly link to it at our website, democracynow.org.